lots of new updates in version 2.1.0. Watch this whole entire video. I'm saving the best updates for last. Quite a few quality of life updates around folder and conversations. Starting with, if you click on a conversation, you're now gonna see a subtle highlight for the parent folder. Plus we're now displaying icons for if you bookmark a conversation or if you pinned a conversation. One more thing, if you hover over a folder and click on add a new conversation, with this new conversation, you're also gonna see the parent folder highlighted. And this is gonna provide you with a more visual cue of which project this new conversation is gonna fall under. If you select the toggle filter and then click on this filter icon, you now have various options on how you could order, sort, or even hide or show different items within the project tree, such as you could order by project name or created in ascending or descending order. You could order the conversations by title, created date, or the latest activity. And then you also could display or hide the recents folder, the archive folder, which is a new feature I'll cover in a bit. You can hide folders that don't have any conversations under them. And you could also toggle the number of conversations per folder, which shows up right here next to the folder. You can now auto archive older conversations. To enable this, click on the ellipses on the far right, enable auto archive, and then you can set conversations to archive after so many days, as well as you have the option to run the archive process now. Workspace lock and secret encryption. This feature allows you to lock out your workspace as well as encrypt all of your secrets. To activate, click on the ellipses icon and click on enable protection. You'll set a passphrase. Be sure to remember this passphrase, save it in a safe spot because there's no way to recover if you forget your passphrase. And one more thing, just like the title implies, this is per workspace. It's not global for all workspaces, but you can enable this feature workspace to workspace. There are a few more languages that are now supported, including the King's English, Spanish, and Russian. There's no doubt that some Hawkeyes already saw this. Llama.cpp is now supported. This is our experimental MVP iteration of this, but this allows for a new local inference engine option, and you could either install it from here or from the model hub. And very similar to local AI models or MLX models, if you're a Mac user, we have all the familiar layout where you can look at featured models and then click on the download icon to download. You can see which models you have installed. And you could also search the Hugging Face community for Llama CPP models. When having a conversation with the Llama CPP model, if you select on the model parameters, there's a couple features specific to Llama CPP, which are amazing. The first one being default to model max. So if you're having long conversations where a lot of context is needed, select that option. As long as your machine's able to handle the additional processing power needed, this is gonna retain context a lot longer so that you experience less hallucinations and as well as longer continuity. One more thing, if you click on extra parameters, there's a truncation strategy available where you could select between truncate middle, truncate old or none. And what this is gonna do essentially is as conversations get long and they're approaching the context limit, this is automatically going to either truncate the middle of the conversation, basically removing it so you're left with the beginning and the end of the conversation, which is great if you're having conversations where the first few messages have critical context for the conversation at large, or if you're just having a long ongoing conversation where the first few messages don't really matter contextually, truncate old will remove those. And this way you're able to continue a conversation without getting any error messages that you've surpassed the context limit. When you search models within a model provider or with the model selection, we now have the fuzzy search option right here with this arrow. Select that and then type something like 2.5 flash. And that's going to give you fuzzy results, which in many cases will help you find the model that you're looking for quicker. If you feel like you're missing workspace data, go to settings, data, and then check the lost and found. Click on the icon on the far right, and you can select between scan app data or scan a specific folder. The scan app data is only available on the desktop version of Missy Studio, and this will show you any workspaces that are detached from the current instance of Missy Studio. So in this case, we see the current one, which is what I'm on right now. We see linked, which means Missy Studio sees this and will show this workspace as an option. But you also see these two home workspaces that are found, but they're not currently accessible in Missy Studio. To make them accessible, click on the ellipses icon, and then click on import and you can import this workspace back into Missy Studio. With Missy Studio Web, you only have the scan folder option, 
And for this, you'll need to find where the browser stores data, which to be honest, is gonna be a little more complicated. And to see how to do that, look at our documentation site for a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to do that with Misty Studio Web. In Personas, use these options if you wanna hide and isolate the prompt that you send during a conversation, or isolate the response that you get back from the persona, or to automatically enable autoresponder if you're chatting with this persona in a conversation. And saving one of the best features for last, say hello to the new Shadow Persona. The Shadow Persona is available for Orm subscribers. To enable it in a conversation, click on the Shadow Persona icon in the top right, and then use it in the conversation. For this Shadow Persona, it is a Mac expert, and it has access to a tool in my toolbox where it can pull information about my MacBook. So I'm gonna ask a model here, what is the memory for my Mac? The model in the main conversation is not gonna have any idea because I did not enable that tool for it. And the job of the shadow persona is to observe the conversation that you're having in the main chat and not interact directly with it. And it can see that I'm asking this model in the main conversation about my max memory. And so the shadow persona that I created here with having a tool enabled to look at my max device information, it lets me know exactly what my total memory is. And this is only but a taste of the shadow persona. I have a whole other video that I'm gonna to link to in the description for this video that covers everything you need to know about Shadow Persona, including five awesome examples on how you can use it in your conversations. And that's it for the 2.1.0 release. There's some other items I haven't covered. Be sure to check out the change log for everything that's new, including some of the fixes that we've released in this as well.